It's actually, uh, it wasn't supposed to be what it sounds like right now, actually. It sounds very, um, dark in some way, very side trancey and, yeah. and it's, um, and it sounds, it, ha it, it was supposed to be this mainstream side trance track that was supposed to be, you know, very, very, very commercial, you know, um, and then eventually it, it took a turn to, to, full-on trance track that I really, really wanted to portray because I, I, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do a mainstream track, sounding track. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm always, I, I'm, I'm open-minded in terms of, you know, my sound, but you know, ultimately it's, it's just really about staying true to, to the sound of trance music. So um, that was overall the the finished product product in terms of the, the, the track that you hear right now so okay yeah it's, it's um yeah well i really like it it, it is uh, a darker version of trance i would definitely agree with you though uh side trance yeah. i hadn't even thought of that like genre but <laughs> um so what has been your favorite festival your favorite venue or your favorite uh crowd to perform for well, I'm all, I've been an EDC kid, so I grew up um, attending EDC um, since I was in college. So, like that, definitely uh, had a huge impact in terms of my sound, in terms of my career right now. So, I mean, when I started attending raves as early as I was like you know, 19, I guess. Mm -hmm. they, so, um, and and. And back in the day, it wasn't a, it wasn't that big. It was it was certainly like you know your your small. They were, weren't warehousey. They were just they were just smaller, um, you know, venues. And they were they were they were in, in um, open parking lots most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this was like back in you know in, in Northern California. There's one company called Skills Entertainment that was a record store um, slash festival um, production company, and um, you know they they held these raves back in the day. And I was like, them. I, I kind of first saw them get bigger and bigger, and eventually when I went down to for college in, at UC Irvine, that's when I started getting into like you know the more bigger the bigger raves that were held held by Atomiac, so you know, the electric carnivals and back in the day it was uh they were in tandem with um i believe it was uh, uh together as one mm -hmm. which was uh one of the more old school raves from, from before before they had a falling out i guess but yeah they were, they were the two bigger boys so yeah edc is a blast i've been several times it's life changing <laughs> Well, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's <laughs> yeah. It's very very fun. It is, isn't it? Um, so give us a little bit of background about yourself. I know you're in Manila right now, um, but you're saying you're from uh, California. Just tell us, just you know, um, how old you are, where you're from, um, a little bit more in depth. You know, anything about your family you want to share? Sure. Um, so I'm from San Francisco. I grew up um, in the Bay Area, in Oakland. Um, 
and you know I, I've lived there pretty much my whole life um, and in terms of the music scene I was heavily inspired by the hip-hop scene in, in the Bay Area the very very beginning I started DJing when I was 14 um, so when I started DJing I actually started collecting records first and um, I started collecting surprisingly enough um, trance records, like classic trance records in um, the early 2000s. So, you know, I started collecting, collecting those, and eventually that led me to playing vinyl, and eventually led me to playing hip hop, which is kind of weird because usually people would say, oh, you started out with hip hop music, and then you would kind of venture out to different genres. But, um, you know, for me, it was kind of like a reverse. I, would, I was collecting records that were dance music, and then eventually got me into hip hop vinyl, which um, got me into turntablism, scratching, and eventually, you know, um, you know the, the regular club gigs um, when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And, but trance music and dance music in general never really left. I was still playing it. So eventually, mm -hmm. um, you know, throughout college, when back in uh, UC Irvine, I would, I, would, I would spin, I would do my regular club gigs. Um, I was doing pretty well. You know, I was in, in LA and then, you know, Vegas. Um, nothing, nothing big. These were just basically you're running the middle of club gigs. And, um, and eventually I, I had to make a choice, like, you know, because I was seeing, my, seeing a lot of my friends just DJing and DJing and DJing. And I'm just like, okay, so am I going to just DJ and play other people's records? for the rest of my career as a DJ. Um, or I could just really pursue what I really would like to do, which is, you know, dance music. So um, this was back in 2010 when I made a decision. And I started venturing out into production, um, music production. And that's when I started kind of like getting my influences back with yeah. dance music and then, you know, and eventually started, you know, just really experimenting with, with, with the sound, and it led me to just, just it took me a while to really get, get to where I'm at right now. But um, mm -hmm. that's the beginning, I guess. So yeah. You know, that's where yeah. It so you talked about some of those influences. Who are some of those big influences, whether they're um, electronic based or not, you know, I know like a lot of people are really um, influenced by, you know, they listen to rock when they were younger or they listen yeah. to, you know, different things like that. Um, so in terms of uh, trans DJs, I listened to Gesto when he was still into trans music, Fair Course thing, um, Paul Van Dyke for sure, um, all of the gold. And then in terms of you know, external influences, um, heavily influenced by, by uh, a new wave, new order, and the question of um, a lot of those really retro sounds. My dad, you know, is, is, a, is a heavy new wave fan, so you know, I, I, I was a very, very influenced for that. And um, yeah, and, and I guess in high school, I, I also still listened to a lot of rock music, so you know, you're, yeah. So I was a, I was a, I was a, a new metal emo kid from back in high school, so that's definitely one of my updates. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might have lost you there. Come on, internet, internet work. <laughs> Are you still there? Oh, no. Okay, I think you're back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. There you go. I, was, I okay. lost you there for a second, but I think it's better now. Okay. <laughs> but it was right at the end, so I think it was okay. <laughs> um, what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Um, well, I was actually, right after college, I wasn't supposed to pursue music full on. I was supposed to be a lawyer, actually. Um, so I, 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 you know, I was headed towards this career, this legal career. Like, I, I had my LSATs done, you know, I had, I was, I was ready to do the law school, you know, so I did. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I attended two years of law school, almost two years of law school, and then eventually I moved here to Manila for an internship. Yeah. And then I realized, okay, so you know, it was because when I was in law school, it was it was there was this um, 
it, it was pretty difficult. I mean, not gonna lie, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a huge endeavor, but, um, you know, and it kind of gave me a, a, it made me choose, really, like, because, you know, a lot of my friends say, like, the legal profession is a, is a jealous one, so you can't have a binary, or, you know, dual, um, dual pass in, ter in terms of what you want to do, you really have to choose one when it comes to, 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 to law, so, you know, I started realizing that my grades were not good enough, they were, they were okay, but then they were to the point where it was going to get me anywhere, so I had to make a choice, like, either spend a lot more money, but really do okay and kind of mediocre, or, you know, just, just try to, like, stop and keep going. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Day, so. Well, I'm glad you did. I mean, it's a hard choice to decide those kinds of things, you know. Yeah. And I was wondering why you were in Manila. That you know, being from California, um, my boyfriend's stepmom is from there, so I was kind, of, I, you know, kind of know a little bit about the area and stuff like that. And yeah. it sounds like you've got somebody very active in the background over there. <laughs> well, yeah, the cats are, are having a war. <laughs> it's um, it's it's around 8 a.m. So they're they're really wild. <laughs> no, I understand. We just fed um my I just fed my cats dinner, and so they are like passed out somewhere, not bothering me. <laughs> that's good. Kind of the not opposite not. there. Um, no. that's that's funny though. Very active. I could hear him over there, and I could see him down there running around. <laughs> Everybody always loves when the pets join the interviews and the zooms. <laughs> Um, if you could give your fans one piece of advice about your career, their life, or anything in general, what would it be? Oh man, it froze again. Hopefully we get it back. <laughs> oh, are you there? There you go. There you go. You're back. Okay. okay. Did you hear the question? Um, the... Yep, I okay. totally heard it. Um, so, the the um, the main advice that I wish that I actually received when I was starting out, and and I always told this to my to my students, um, I'm teaching production and music. Um, okay. Is uh, you know um, seek out all the help that you can get, and especially as someone starting out. Seek out everything that you can that you can that you can get in terms of help, um, and don't be prideful about it. Really, just just try to humble yourself because you know um, when I was starting out, I thought I knew everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the thing is, pride gets to you, and you, sometimes people, you know, you really have to be open, and you really have to be open to collaborate with other people. You can't you can't close doors. Because the moment you start doing that, you start limiting yourself, and the longer it'll take you to get to where you want to be. And um, and it's always this this rat race where you know, people want to get to where they're at right away. Because mm -hmm. it's an you know, immediate satisfaction you want you want it right now. So um, yeah, really collaborate, really humble yourself, and don't be afraid to. You know, to to fail and, and start over. You know, it's it's something that you have to you have to. Nobody gets it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's not lucky. You have to you have to consistently fall down to really get where, where you're at. So. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything else you want to share with our um, viewers today or our readers? Uh, like any new releases up your sleeve or anything cool? Share like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, re so currently, right now, I have a release coming up on uh, this Friday. Um, okay. It's with a uh, um, huge, huge uh, trans act um, and producer Daniel Candy. Um, he's been featured in the Juno Beats. Um, he has his own, and we're, I'm actually released on his label right now. I'm always alive. So, um, and it's called Diversion. So uh, it's going to be out on Spotify and on the part January twenty first. And, um, that's and then another release is going to be coming up two weeks after that, which is another um, collaboration of mine with uh, Art 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 on AVA AVA White under AVA Recordings. So that's going to be you know massive as well. Mm -hmm. 
And when's that second one coming out? Uh, uh, February 11th. Awesome. Yeah, I wrote both those down. Um, that way we can make sure we cover them with a festival voice too. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be great um, to see. Well, Angel, that's all we have time for today. Unless you have anything else to share, we really want to thank you for taking the time to chat with us and uh, get to know you a little better. And um, we also want to thank, of course, our Festival Voice audience for keeping up on the, uh, this information and allowing us to be your voice at festivals around the world. Either Angelo nor myself, or Festival Voice, sorry, <laughs> would be where we are today without your support. So uh, keep it tuned here for more exclusive content from the Festival Voice. Too fast when she falls and I'll be waiting